Remember when I told you guys on Instagram that 2 Peter has about four chapters in it? And how I told you we'd have four videos to talk with you guys about, one on Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday and Friday? Yeah, I, I was wrong. You see, there's, there's only three chapters in 2 Peter. <laughs> so uh, today is our last video, which is going to be awesome. But you probably already knew that we only had three chapters because you were reading on your own and you noticed, wait a second, there's three chapters. Not four chapters like Rose was talking about. What a nincompoop. See, but I'd also guess as you were reading along, you probably came across this theme in the third chapter of 2 Peter. And in my Bible, it blatantly comes out and says it as the title. And that theme would be, the day of the Lord is coming. And that's kind of weird to think about, isn't it? To think that the Lord is coming back someday to separate those who have faithfully and obediently pursued a relationship with him and those who have totally discredited and ignored a relationship with him. To take those people who have a relationship with him into this new heaven that he has promised. And for those who have not, to leave those people behind in this scary, sour, and bitter eternal life. Isn't it crazy to read that Peter is wanting to tell these people that the Lord is coming and that these words he was speaking were about 2,000 years ago. So if they were 2,000 years ago and we're now in 2020 and he hasn't came back yet, is he coming? Was, was Peter choking? I, I think right now would be a really good time for God to come back and to send Jesus to save us. I mean, we're going through a pandemic right now. This is pretty crazy. It'd be a perfect time to come back. And it's okay to have these thoughts. It's okay to question these things and to think about some of this stuff. But Peter actually says some pretty good words in verse 9 to answer these for us. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. And what's his promise that he's talking about? Well, he talks about his promise in verse 13. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised. A world filled with God's righteousness. That promises the new heaven and new earth that we get to live in with God's righteousness. That's a pretty great promise. And whether we realize it or not, that promise is better than anything on earth has to offer for us. You see, God wants everyone in on this promise. That is why the day of the Lord's coming has not yet come. Because not everyone has jumped in on this promise, let alone heard this promise and had the opportunity to choose it and be a part of it. Verse 15 would say that the Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. And Peter is writing down these words to remind all of us that Jesus is coming again. Whether you think about that a lot or whether you're like, oh snap, I forgot that Jesus is coming again. You see, even though you may know Jesus and have a relationship with him, some people don't. And if Jesus were to come now, you may be saved and you're good, but those people, those people aren't saved. You see, they won't enter an eternal life filled with God's righteousness and peace, but they'll enter the eternal life of pain and darkness and suffering. And Peter is hoping that as followers of Jesus, people who say that we trust him and that we have a relationship with him, that we would live our lives as if Jesus was coming back soon. In verses 11 through 12, he says, What holy and godly lives you should live, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. And we hurry it along by letting people know of the fullness of Jesus and that a life with him can bring peace beyond measure. And in verse 14, he says, And so, dear friends, while you're waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And so the questions that we want to ask ourselves are this. Am I living a life as if Jesus was coming back tomorrow? And what does it look like to live a life as if Jesus was coming back tomorrow? Comment below what your favorite verse from 2 Peter 3 was or what you got most from reading on your own.